First, what time signature do you think this piece is written in? The violin part may make things clearer here, since the piano part has some unusual beaming. Yes, it's in 12-8. It has four groups of three quavers per bar. Now, what key do you think this piece is in? Remember, there are two options for every key signature. First, what keys are represented by five flats? Yes, they are D flat major and B flat minor. So which one do you think is the key here? Well, one of my favorite quick and dirty methods for key ID is to look at the end of the piece. Yep, it's D flat major. Now let's look at the first line of this page. Two chords are circled. In D flat major, can you name these two triads with the right Roman numeral? Okay, the first one is D flat, F, and A flat. What triad is that? Yes, it's one. How about the next one? The notes are G flat, B flat, and D flat. Yes, that's a four. On the next line, one right hand chord is circled. There's a symbol before one of the notes here. What is it and what does it mean? It's a double flat and that means the note you will play will not be B, but B double flat, which is the same piano key as A. Now in the next bar, a whole chord is circled and there's a squiggly line in front of it. What is that line? It means roll the notes in this chord, meaning play them one at a time quickly, starting usually from the bottom. As a bonus, that MG over the top part right before this rolled chord is another way of saying MS. Can you remember what MS means? Yes, it means mano sinistra, or play with the left hand. The arranger wants you to play that top note with the left hand crossing over the right. After this bar we've just discussed, I've circled another chord. What is the triad within D flat major? Yes, this is the tonic, or one. Now let's hop down to the very end. I've circled the whole bar. What triad is played throughout the bar? Yes, this is also one. This may have helped you figure out that we were in D flat and not B flat minor.